Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering an underrated live action film titled Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Killer. Yes, Yay! that's a title. I've wanted to see this movie for so many years when it originally came out. I didn't get to the theaters to see it. And no one was airing on TV and I didn't get it for sale. And bless Rascal, she bought it for me for my yes. birthday this year. So I finally get to see it. Now this movie is true to its title and it reimagines the president, Abraham Lincoln, who moonlights as a secret vampire hunter. Mm -hmm. It sounds so cool. Mm -hmm. He protects the country from invading vampires while also running for president and protecting his family from evil. Yes. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get us some future podcasts and want to pause videos. Yes. And be sure to follow us on Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram under Paul's Animation. And feel free to share our videos. We appreciate it. Yes. I couldn't believe this movie, how good it was. And... There's a train scene that I'm going to mention first before we talk about anything else. All right. That looks just like the Mugen train portion of, well, the, the train portion of the Mugen train movie or the Mugen train arc in season two of right. Demon Slayer. It's like, oh my gosh, it's the same thing. Yes. It's the same thing. Yes. That was actually pretty awesome to see because we had seen the movie uh, long before we saw Abe Lincoln. Mm -hmm. But it sounds strange, but for some reason, I always thought, that sounds pretty cool. I'd like to see that. And if you are familiar or remember during that time, they had also some other, like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Mm -hmm. And they had one with, um, that's so darn true, Harriet Tubman. Yes, she, she was, was a zombie slayer. Right, and then they had one more. I think one with John Henry, he was finding some type of tarantula spider monsters i'm sorry i don't know what they're called so during this period this became the trend yes and for me this one sounded the best and i am so happy that i was not disappointed this movie is fantastic if you like vampires action movies horror movies abraham lincoln lots of <laughs> action. right i guess some reason that comes up yeah and this is the movie to watch yes and like you said, it sounds like a weird title, but when this was uh, a trend for a little while, this was, I guess, in a way, the most successful one. Because they have Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies as a movie, but we just never watched it. But I did get the book, and it started right off from the beginning of the book to be graphic, and it's no joke. At least you get a little, you know, a little lead-in way here with right. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Curry, right? but not with Pride, and Prejudice, and Zombies right. from the beginning. Right? And then... It also looks like they got inspiration from Supernatural with the way they made it. And they really tried to correlate with what happened in Lincoln's life when explained that it happened because of vampires. All the really big events uh, that happened in his life came from him protecting the country from vampires. Like, he was, at the time, the biggest threat to vampires. And... His best friend was played in here by Anthony Mack. Yes, Falcon. Falcon. And it was so awesome to see him here because all I kept thinking was, hey, maybe this is how he got cast. Yes. And also Sebastian Stan played an elder, an older vampire yes. in the movie who actually was helping humans to defeat the vampires. Yes. And I was like, maybe this is how they got cast for their roles in Marvel. Yes. Because it was so exciting, so much action. It really is like a superhero movie yes it really, it, really, it really was if they did in like a historical superhero type thing and it's kind of ironic they did that because they've been trying to put now for the past couple years everything and everyone is a superhero it's just sort of like the the cliche now has become and most of the time when it comes, like, there's a whole comic I remember being out at one point where there's a bunch of presidents from different alternate worlds and they all come together, all superheroes, and there's no reason behind it. There's no explanation. Just, they're all superheroes and they all kind of protect the Earth, but they kind of have their own, uh, their own goals and they really don't care about the people only if they, like, only if they're, like, a certain thing that they're into. Oh, okay, I'll help you. And it was like, this is kind of selfish. Right? But I have to say, this is the best example if they want to turn a president into a superhero. And I'm surprised they didn't do that with another one. Like, have someone be a goblin hunter or, like, Teddy Roosevelt's a werewolf hunter or something yes. like that. I was expecting something like that to come next, but nothing ever did. 
And that's unfortunate because this really, really went well. Of course, you know there can't be a sequel. Right. But as you said, they could have made other installments with other presidents hunting different monsters. That would have really been great. They dropped the ball on that and missed out. Yeah, unfortunately. And I do like the filming for this. The shots that were set up mm -hmm. so you could see all the action were really good. You didn't seem like you were missing out on anything. Yes, great cinematography. Yes, and also when it got to heightened parts of the movie and it just got really high energy, you just almost felt like literally you were there. Mm -hmm. I, the way that it was filmed was done fantastically. You yes. felt like you were part of the action. Yes, you might have felt a little frightened, but you felt like you were there. You felt like, I'm watching this. I'm in on this. Oh, I know Abraham Lincoln's true identity. Yes. Oh, I know what's going on. And because, of course, this is history. It's already being lived. We've read our books. We know the story. We feel like, hey, we already know. Right. We know what's coming up right here. Right. But what really happened? You just feel like you're a participant and a viewer and you're enjoying it at the same time. It was really a brilliant way of presenting this movie. And I'm surprised that more directors in Hollywood haven't used this approach. It really is a great approach. Yes, it, it is. And like I said, this was a short a short trend that they had with historical figures being monster hunters. And I thought they would kind of bring it back now that Supernatural has ended. But it seems like the trend now is to portray monster hunters as the bad guys and the monsters are victims, even though they're eating people and animals. Well, you shouldn't hurt them. They're just doing what they gotta do. And it's like, <laughs> why? Why am I you sympathizing with the with the per thing that's that's eating people? But now hunters are they're trying to push hunters as being bad guys, and all they do is hunt for sport like they're regular animal hunters, which is really not true because the supernatural wouldn't have lasted for 15 years, and Vamp uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Kid wouldn't have been made. Hansel and Gretel witch hunters would have never been made if they had that idea. But I want to say for this, this was a great example. If you want to do a movie that's just really out of the box and you really like it's just like something you would never think of to put together but somehow making it work and i really love when they do movies like that it's like no one else has thought of this why hasn't this ever th been thought about before and this has become a favorite and during october i'm gonna watch it again yeah now you should be watching it it's october watch it again and if you haven't seen it make an effort to get this movie and give it a watch if you have seen it let us know how much you you know did you love it did you hate it was it something you thought you could do without or you wanted more did you see any of the other movies that we mentioned during that time period that were made let us know in the comments below we really want to hear because we missed out on the experience of when it came i know i missed out on the experience when it came out for sure there's no way you were gonna watch it right but i missed out on the experience of seeing it in the theater if you saw it in a the theater, please let me know. Was it amazing? In right. the comments below. And last for me is this is a great way to see Anthony Mackie before Marvel. Yeah. To see that he already had the presence. He already had the acting ability. Mm -hmm. He already had this superhero type presence and persona right. in this movie where he really was a natural choice for Falcon and being added to the MCU. Right. This here, this had to be the reason he was chosen. Right. This has to be what solidified his fate as becoming a Marvel superhero. Exactly. So Anthony Mackie fan, get this movie and watch as well. And my last comment is that you mentioned like firsthand in this <laughs> podcast of how it's pretty much it's pretty much live action Mugen Train. Yes. And yes. it's weird because you know a lot of times they do these movies or shows they have to be on a train they always end up on the top of the train somehow some way because that's the most exciting part rather than being on the inside so i think it's funny both movies did it and what's hilarious and actually intriguing about it is that they don't feel like you just copy paste it they feel like it really was inspired because we see a lot of things where oh they just took it from here it's not original they just did shot for shot this and shot for shot that they didn't do anything new but you don't get that with either uh, Abraham Lincoln or Mugen Train. They right. both, like, you can tell, okay, this got inspiration from this movie, yeah. but they felt like two completely different stories, completely different scenes, completely different outcomes because you're excited with either version. And that's how you know both are written so well, both scenes and movies. Yes, and the plot twist for each is great. And 
them using a train as the uh, the place it takes place, yeah. where the climax takes place in both movies, right. is brilliant. As, and as you said, in the way each one does it, it's just outstanding and fantastic and fun. Again, if you've seen Mugen Train, watch Abraham Lincoln Vampire Killer if you haven't seen it. And vice versa, if you've seen Abraham Lincoln Vampire Killer, but you haven't seen Demon Slayer Mugen Train, you gotta watch it. Yes. It's like they are two of a kind and just absolutely fun and magnificent viewing. Yes. Watch one after the other. Yeah, it's yeah. Better. It's perfect. So, again, if you've seen Abraham Lincoln Vampire Killer in the other movies during that time, that were in the same type of universe, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe for updates and weekly videos on your favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely. Thank you so much for finding me. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace.